I'm not an academic, so I'm going to give a slightly more informal um, presentation on some of the work that we've actually been doing at the Collections Trust, which is where I work, and we coordinate the Potage Plus project, which I'm really pleased to say is one of the reasons why we're all able to be in this room today, so it's really wonderful to be here. Um, and as part of the work that we did in the project, we actually did a big campaign where we photographed a lot of the UK's Art Nouveau architecture. And one of the things that kind of got, our, got my interest particularly is um, a building called the Turkey Cafe, which is in a town called Leicester, which is in the Midlands of the UK. I'm actually from Leicester, so I'm quite a big advocate for the city. And we've got some, this is another one of its gems to talk about, along with the uh, Richard III King, which we found in a car park. So, um, to start off, um, I want to introduce you to this man today. Arthur Wakeley was a politician, businessman, architect, and an active contributor to the newly forming and wealthy city of Leicester. He was born in, the UK in 1862 in Melton Mowbray, which is more notable for its culinary delights, such as Stilton cheese, which can only be made within a 25-mile radius of the town, and pork pies, which you'll see here as well. Um, when he was about 23, he was elected um, mayor of Leicester, which he moved to, on the, 19th, on the 9th of November 1987. And in the 1920s, he was the chair of Leicester's first housing and town planning committee, as well as, as, well as being a Wesleyan local preacher and president of the Temperance Union, whilst also making several attempts to enter Parliament as a Liberal candidate for the Melton Mowbray Division. Personally, I first encountered him in his capacity as an architect as part of some research for the Potage Plus project, where I discovered his flamboyantly designed buildings in the city, which range from a synagogue to a number of factories, a home for the blind to hotels and streets of affordable housing. Perhaps one of his most interesting tasks was to design an Art Nouveau turkey-themed cafe in the centre of Leicester. He was keen to adopt current trends when designing his building, and the Turkey Cafe opened in 1901, embracing the new art of the period, Art Nouveau. You can see it here. Um, the land around where the Turkey Cafe now stands, at 24 Granbury Street, Leicester, um, which is, um, was home to inns, blacksmiths, stables, pigsties and homes. So it's not quite Gin Lane from Hogarth, but, you know, you can get the idea. <laughs> um, while families did work and live in the area, morali morality and honesty were not hugely visible. This is evident when the Falcon Inn, built on the land next door to the cafe, lost its licence in 1873 for being a house for prostitutes. However, situations improved as ownership of the land changed and new stores were established. In 1877, James Wesley, a grocer and confectioner, bought the land next to what used to be the Falcon Inn. He owned the land until 1899 when he sold 22 Granby Street to Arthur Wakeley. Wakeley already had his first tenant in line, a John Wynne, and Wynne was a restaurateur who already owned the Oriental Cafe in Leicester. The offices of Wakeley's architectural practice were above Wynne's Oriental Cafe, making it very easy for him to negotiate a deal regarding the construction and occupancy of a new cafe on Granby Street. Wakeley understood that to realise his vision of his turkey cafe, he would need specially designed tiles to adorn the front, and so approached the Royal Dalton Company for help constructing his design for the new turkey cafe. Oh. Um, the style of the turkey cafe reflected the new trend of Art Nouveau, and the building was designed to create a sense of stability by visually implying a pyramid structure. This was done by having seven arches on the ground floor, which you can see here, and then decreasing the number of arches on each level. So you can see there's five here. The pyramid is then completed with a single turkey located at the top of the building. It was coloured blue, green and buff, which allowed any onlooker to fully appreciate the shapes and curves of the building's design. And the facade was constructed using tiles, hollow blocks and a type of terracotta called caraware, a matte glazed stoneware developed by the company in 1888. The caraware tiles of this frontage were handmade by William Neatby, a ceramic artist who worked for Royal Dalton. In addition to these features, Art Nouveau can be found in the decorations etched into the front windows, as well as the red and green Art Nouveau, um, Art Nouveau designs of the rear tea rooms and the turkey statues who sit in pride of place at the cafe's entrance, which I think are quite adorable. The Turkey Cafe opened in September 1901 and was renumbered 24 Granby Street, as a tea room, the cafe was popular with women. Not only was it a respectable venue for gathering, 
but it also provided a convenient meeting place to discuss the progress of women's rights. However, the cafe was not designed with only women in mind. Located in the back of the cafe was the smoke room. This room, with its dark interior, provided a place for men to gather and converse. The cafe became so popular that in 1911, the owner, John Wynne, expanded the building into next door, taking over the premises of Wheeler's Ken Wheeler Kendall's umbrella and candlestick merchants. This change allowed Wynne to expand the, expand the restaurant and storage space and add a billiard room. Further renovations were made in 1927, when Wynne decided to modernise the entrance, making the front appear more Art Deco than Art Nouveau. Wakeley allowed for these changes, as long as Wynne restored the shop to its original appearance once the lease was done. However, unfortunately, when Wynne's family sold the Turkey Cafe to another local Leicester business, Bruciani Bakers, in 1936, sorry, 1963, no restoration was actually undertaken. Under its new ownership, the Bruciani family turned the Turkey Cafe into a coffee shop and, and bakery. Um, an ice cream shop as well. The reputation of the cafe as a location for women to gather still continued, and in 1966, the cafe actually had a ladies-only room. However, once the Sex Discrimination Act was passed in 1974, the cafe was no longer able to prohibit men from entering, and in 1968, the cafe was once again renovated. The result was a mixture of old and new. The original interior tiled walls were panelled over, a tiled mural of a turkey was added, and smaller windows were inserted. The Turkey Cafe went, underwent yet another renovation process when Rainer Opticians purchased the property in 1982. The interior was, already, was altered greatly to accommodate the new business and curved windows were added to the above stories. However, the etched glass windows on the ground floor and the front arch were kept and restored to their original condition. Rainer Opticians tracked down the Hearthenware Ceramics Company of Loughborough in the UK, which were the only firm experienced in using the terracotta material needed for the restoration at this period. The opticians had the original architectural drawings and a 1910 photograph which architects Sorde and Moffat had in their archives. As a result, Rayner commissioned Deardon Briggs designs to follow these plans for the restoration process and creation of reproductions. In the end, the restoration cost over £30,000 with the Leicester City Council contributing £5,000. For two decades, this building has served as an optician's office. Uh, sorry, it did serve as an optician's office, but in 2004 the building was returned to its original purpose and resumed business as a cafe. The building has been listed as a Grade II building for its Art Nouveau style architecture, making it clear that the building is of architectural and historic special interest. To the people of Leicester, the building is a landmark and an interesting part of the city's heritage. The building has served as a cafe, restaurant, meeting place, ice cream parlour, and unexpectedly an optician's. While numerous buildings were destroyed during the World Wars, including all of Wynne's other cafes, Turkey Cafe has remained. So the building really has come full circle. When you're st standing in its restored original appearance and serving as a cafe, acting as a perfect location to sit back, enjoy a cup of coffee, and transport it back to an earlier time. So this is one of the things that we've kind of discovered as part of the Potage Plus project, um, which if you want more information, you can find it at the website here. Um, and if anybody would like to get involved, there's still some time. If you've got any collections that you think would be interested to also be displayed in the project, then we'd be really happy if you got in touch with us. Um, and also, please, these are our social media channels. So thank you. And this is all of us. You may spot some people in the room today, so say hello and find out what their collection's about. So thank you. <laughs>